um, Carmel Cipollone. I move that the question be now put. I'll, yeah. I'll hear from um, uh, Brett Hudson. He spoke on part one. Thank you, Mr Chair. So uh, we move on to part two, and I, I, I will absolutely focus on this part of the bill, sir. Uh, as I said, that, but just to recap, as I did say in part one when we were on that, the, the, the purpose of the Act was to transfer all the existing property interest powers and obligations from the old board to the new. And here we are into part two, which talks specifically of that transfer, the rights, the property, the obligations from the old to the new. And I think when we're making this change, Mr Chairman, we can appreciate that it's about a seamless transition, that it's actually the bill is about uh, giving the board, which is a new board, but giving the board greater flexibility to do the right things for its constituent <coughs> members uh, by, by removing some of the constraints that exist under the the existing legislation, it's very important in doing that that we don't uh, abrogate any rights, that we don't actually leave someone in a worse off position than they would be, or, or to remove rights, particularly rights of challenge, uh, uh, by creating new legislation that might remove an ability for a party to take action against the old board, because of course the old board will no longer exist. So if I draw your attention, Mr Chair, to clause 5.2. It notes very clearly that proceedings that could have been commenced or continued by or against the old board before the commencement of this Act may be commenced or continued by or against the new board on and from the commencement of this Act. And this one uh, sub-clause, Mr Chair, uh, will ensure that uh, the transition to the new board will ensure that that board uh, retains any of the obligations that remained uh, or that existed with the previous board under the legislation that shall be repealed uh, and will also not prevent any party. So a party may have a contract uh, with the old board. They, might be, they may maintain property. They may provide a service to the Blamey Cleaning Service. There are any number of services to which uh, individuals or companies or sole trading businesses might have some poor form of express or implied contract with the old board. Uh, so it's very, very important that in, in making this change, we don't suddenly wipe out the rights that they had to enforce their own contract provisions uh, and, and to ensure that, that they have a, um, a means of redress, a means of, of having issues heard with the new board. Because it would be, it would be uh, quite frankly, an injustice, I think, in terms of the intention of this, this bill, if we had created a situation where you know, old legislation was repealed and a new board constituted and all of a sudden people wouldn't have rights to take actions for uh, historical uh, issues or services. Um, so I think it's a very, very important that, that, we, that we are taking that action and I think something can give a great deal of confidence uh, for existing service providers to, to, the, to the board, the trust as it exists today. But along with that, we have to make sure that in doing so we don't create issues that weren't there to begin with. So we have clause six with matters that are not affected by the transfer of those rights, obligations and the, the, those properties. Uh, so the very clear and express provision there in clause 6a, for instance, so it notes the dissolution of the old board, the transfer of its property rights and obligations to the new board are not to be treated as placing a person in breach of or default under any contract or in breach of trust or in breach of confidence or as otherwise making the person guilty of a civil wrongdoing. And it goes on to say that uh, are not to be treated as entitling a person to terminate a contract, to enforce or accelerate the performance of an obligation or to require the performance of an obligation. And those areas together, Mr Chair, are saying if the first part of Clause 5 was making sure that no, no one had their rights uh, quashed by the, the creation of a no, new board, that in the process of making this new or constituting this new board, that people couldn't use that as some sort of clever leverage to create an issue where none existed previously so that the new board couldn't be made to suddenly provide a different level of performance uh, or, or, or to face uh, an unsubstantiated allegation of an, an issue that didn't exist, or, in fact, that someone couldn't use the switch, the transition, as a vehicle or as an opportunity to terminate an agreement. So we are protecting rights and obligations on both sides, if you will, the trusts and the members of the board, but also the, the providers of services 
uh, to those trusts. So we look at part two, and I think there's still a lot more to be said on part two, but we look at part two at the one that's giving effect to these transfers and creating the sort of necessary protections that we like to see. Um, 